Yes. We'd like to know if your TV picture... Well, there's telescope uh, payload being developed. There's also payloads uh, which will have their own uh, rocket engine which will propel them to, to orbits much further out than the shuttle can actually carry them itself. The telescope is really going to be a fantastic thing, isn't it? That goes up in uh, 1985, is it? It's and, not, uh, not too far away, Frank. And that will be... Well, people say that that's just going to make uh, the telescopes that we have on Earth uh, appear like, uh, you know, like like these little binoculars that I tried to watch the, uh, the ascent with. This is the when we opened up that right door. Uh, well, first when we opened up the center line, we noticed uh, no movement at all in the door. When I opened up the four and a half bulkheads, uh, it maybe bounced up half an inch. And the uh, door opened up nice and smooth, came back, it looked like that we had come through by position alpha. And uh, it came on down all the way to getting a close. Bob, that's shuttle control, Houston. Uh, one hour, 40 minutes, mission last time. Uh, we show uh, Bob Crippen uh, again unlatching the doors, uh, uh, going down the center line now. Roger, Crip, uh, we copied the first part of that, and then we went into a handover, but uh, we copied that everything was right down the pike on the closing. Uh, right the Bob Crippen was describing the manner in which the door opened, and uh, as I observed, everything was extremely nominal. This camera, I believe, is pointed right at the center line of the, uh, of the cargo bay on the interior side. And if that is, uh, is the case, we ought to see first movement mm -hmm. uh, at that point when he Shuttle opens that control, other Houston, uh, all of the uh, center line latches are released now. Okay, I think we can look for some uh, movement very shortly on that other door. And Columbia, Houston, uh, we'd like the DFI to stop until we figure out what the problem is. I'm sorry, Dan, say that one again. Roger, on that DFI uh, recorder, we'd like it to stop until we figure out what the problem is. Okay, we're stopped. Thank you. What is this now, Gene? They, they mentioned a problem. Yes. Uh, remember when these cargo bay doors open and uh, we can see out into space, we'll actually be looking back down into, uh, into Earth because the okay. spacecraft, remember, is upside down in orbit. The camera, when this door opens, uh, we might very well see a picture of ourselves as it goes over this part of Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a, well, in two, itself a spectacular view. Two idea. camera crew, one facing aft and one facing forward. Should, we should get a spectacular view of the Earth. The, these are generally slow and methodical uh, uh, processes because of the seriousness of the nature of examining the opening and closing of the latches, something so critical to the shuttle operation itself. and that. That is why it is taking so long. That is why we plan something like this to occur over the long period of communications passes over the United States. Yes, and they are over this country now. And Columbia, Houston, uh, one more confirmation on that. Uh, we'd like to confirm that the DFI PCM is the one that you turned off. Yeah, my one. These doors are obviously very heavy, but here again, in zero gravity, remember, these doors have uh, no weight constraints working against them as they would if they were sitting here on Earth. They're mm -hmm. sort of free-swinging doors. It takes a lot less, uh, less energy or power uh, to move those doors. Uh, so this is the shuttle control, Houston, at uh, one hour 43 minutes of mission last time. Uh, we've lost our television transmission as we've uh, passed out of uh, Mylas station range. Uh, we're under acquisition now uh, through Bermuda. However, we will pick up uh, television again uh, on the Madrid Pass in uh, a little less than 10 minutes. So they've gone across the uh, United States now. Uh, 43 minutes mission last time. This is Shuttle Control Houston. Well, Gene, we're not going to be able to uh, have a look at uh, at least the United States on this particular pass, are we? No, I don't think we're going to. The main thing was to monitor, and I'm sure the uh, ground recorded the television that they were able to receive of, uh, of these doors opening and closing. Well, did we get confirmation that the uh, other door uh, opened and closed? No, I just uh, I heard him say that they got the center line latches unlatched again after they confirmed we were closed. LOS on the TV. And for that recorder, we'd like you to uh, pull a circuit breaker to... Uh, See if we can get that thing stopped. And that's on panel R11. It's the forward container, recorder main C, circuit breaker on row G. Okay, it's full. Thank you. 
you. Fr Frank, uh, yes. I, I must correct an error. Uh, I guess a veteran in spaceflight has okay, a right to make a mistake, too. Uh, these gentlemen launched in, uh, in a direction or an angle to the north of east. As a result, as the world rotates, of course, uh, they will pass and have passed to the uh, to the north of us. I, I keep thinking parochially, perhaps, uh, on Apollo 17, we launched uh, to the south and... Uh, as a result, uh, we passed south of here on our second pass. So if you'll forgive me for that mistake. Yes, Gene, we'll right, forgive you for that mistake. All right, thank uh, you. <laughs> well, actually, they went over uh, Texas, didn't they? Over yeah. Texas and, and on up towards uh, Washington, I uh, believe, in the uh, eastern seaboard there. That's right. And, so forth. and they will continue to move further north over the United States to, uh, to their maximum uh, northern uh, angle, I believe, of about 40 to 44 degrees uh, latitude, and they will cover the 44 degrees north and 44 degrees south, which gives them a major sec segment of the populace of the entire world. Well, I keep, I go keep, ahead, Gene. Well, I was just going to say, I keep thinking about their flight and looking at this vehicle and holding it, and it sure does make, uh, sort of make you homesick. Well, I, I tell you, what I'm really looking forward to now, I mean, I, I, since they've got one set of doors open, you like to believe that they're probably going to be able to get the others uh, opened and closed. Uh, well, the landing is really going to be something to see and to. Uh, to well, the, the the major step, obviously, once we uh, it looks like the vehicle is performing on orbit. The fuel cells seem to be performing well. We've used fuel cells before. If we get uh, these doors. Shuttle Control, Houston, at uh, one hour forty-six minutes mission elapsed time, uh, less than a minute away now from. Uh, loss of signal uh, through Bermuda. And Columbia, Houston, uh, we're about 30 seconds uh, from LOS, so we'll see you at Madrid in an hour and 53 minutes. The recorder... Four doors coming up now. The, re Roger, copy. the recorder being discussed on this pass is uh, a real-time development uh, flight instrumentation that uh, would right. be used... Uh, you see where the astronauts are now, swinging out over the Atlantic once again, the second uh, time around. They launched uh, considerably uh, south of where they are now from... Uh, here at uh, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, and they've now swung up over the uh, northeastern United States and are uh, heading northward back out across the Atlantic for the second time. We expect to, uh, to hear more on the television transmission uh, in the next uh, several minutes. We uh, did uh, note that uh, there, there are contingency plans if uh, they have difficulty opening and closing the doors, but uh, those plans are a bit uh, cumbersome and they would obviously prefer not to uh, have to put them into effect. But uh, Bob Crippen talked about them before the uh, mission and explained just what is involved if things go wrong with the opening and closing of the doors. Here's what he said. We have to have the cooling effect of the radiators which are on the inside of the doors if we plan to stay up overnight. We, but prior to opening the doors, the spacecraft is cooled by, just like your body is cooled, we use evaporation of, of water that is uh, flashed out in the vacuum over the, the cooling lines. And we only carry enough water to last us enough for one day without doing an extensive power down. It is possible if for some reason we ran into a problem, couldn't get the doors open, and we had another reason we did not want to go ahead and deorbit because of some other kind of a systems problem, we could probably do an extensive power down of the spacecraft to keep it from building up so much heat, thereby it wouldn't use as much water and to last for the next day. Yes, that was uh, Bob Crippen in a, uh, an interview recorded uh, some time ago in which he described uh, how important it is, actually, to uh, open and close the doors and uh, the difficulties involved in attempting to do that manually in the event any of the elaborate mechanisms for doing it uh, uh, mechanically do not uh, work out. Well, we are one hour and 48 minutes and uh, five seconds, to be precise, into the mission of Columbia, the first space shuttle ever to go into space. It's been a uh, marvelous morning so far. Everything has worked uh, very well. The liftoff was uh, unbelievable. I think if, we're, if we've got a uh, package ready, we could probably see it again because it's now, what, uh, almost uh, 10 minutes to 9 in the uh, eastern part of the country, and probably a good many people have missed it. I wouldn't mind seeing it again if uh, you gentlemen can uh, womp it up for us. We're going to see some live television, uh, we believe, again very shortly in a few minutes as uh, the uh, astronauts are able to transmit signals to us. Let's, uh, let's see the replay of the launch, which took place less than two hours ago. If you missed it, you really missed something. Here it goes. Across the waters. And those 
tremendous engines light up, and there she goes. Frank, there again, we see where it didn't stay on the pad very long. Uh, as soon as those solid engines uh, lit off, it, uh, as we described before, it just sort of leaped into space. Solids with the extra kick gene to get it off the pad in a hurry. The extra thrust. It's got uh, greater thrust over a weight uh, than the Apollo uh, spacecraft had, uh, uh, which gives it that extra kick. Frank, Crip, the, when I did the interview, by the way, uh, which you showed a minute ago, uh, I asked what were the, uh, how would he define a successful flight? And he said, up, uh, getting up safely, open the doors and get it down safely, even if it only lasted half a day. Uh, they would consider that a success. They would have proven the vehicle could take off, accomplish its main objective, opening doors, to drop off cargo, and land safely. 